What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic, and today we're jumping right back into the bot factory. In the last video, you guys pointed out that on level 6, we had to grab a ball, and I did this crazy system with a ton of logic and a bunch of memory bits, and trying to figure out how many red walls there were, and you guys pointed out all I really needed to do was have a sensor check if the ball existed, and if the ball was in front of our bot, we could go backwards. So, today we're going to continue with level 7, and see how far we can get, hopefully get through another 6 levels, I'm thinking, but... But uh, we're going to actually try and do stuff a little bit simpler today. Last time I was trying to take things a little bit overcomplicated. Didn't even, not really intentionally, just sort of, you know, overcomplicated things. I, I used to be an engineer, so that's just sort of the way it goes. So today we're going to try and do things really simple and stupid. All right, so here we go. Level 7, sharp turns. Let's take a look at the course. Uh, let's jump up. Can I? Oh, I hate these stupid jump pads. There we go. Perfect. All right, so the course... Goes straight, turns right, turns left, turns left, and then goes left some more, left. So it's just a bunch of 90 degree turns. And we do have those white colored outlines, so we can use the white. I was doing it with the edge originally, but with the white it should be pretty easy. I'm not too worried about this, to be honest. Two sensors, yeah, pretty standard stuff. Four engines. So really, this actually gives us the ability to do tank drive, which if we're doing a tank drive system... This will actually be really, really easy for sharp turns. The only real thing we've got to balance with this is where we position the sensors relative to the robot. So if we think about this, the sensors are going to need to be at the front, but the center of rotation of this robot is going to be here in the middle. So it might be a problem. It might not. To be honest, we'll probably be okay um, since we are only doing 90 degree turns. But we'll do something like this. You know, those will be our two sensors. Set them to color mode white. And basically, all we got to do is say, as long as neither sensor is active, we can go forward. And if you see something on either of the two sensors, then you have to rotate in the opposite direction until you don't see that anymore. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is just wire up our motors. So, forward will be on the inside bearings, and reverse will be on the outside bearings. Not that that really matters too much, but might as well keep it the same, just in case there is... A little bit of a difference in physics so there we go and if neither sensor is active we can go forward which is perfect and uh, so we're gonna need some logic gates here uh, let me think about this so let's just do some not gates like that perfect so not and not excellent so if you don't see either sensor you can go forward and if you do see uh, let's see here let's so yeah forward on both if you don't see either sensor and if you do see one of the sensors, we're just going to hook them up into this way. So if we see the left sensor, which means the left sensor sees white, it'll turn off forward on the left. Oh, no, this is, see, these are, these are backwards. Yeah, so that needs to go that way, that needs to go that way. So if the left sensor sees white, it turns off forward on the right, and it would turn on reverse on the right, and this would turn on reverse on the left. So pretty simple stuff, right? So if it sees something white here, this will turn off, this will turn on... That'll go in reverse. That'll turn us to the left, away from the white. Perfect. Oh, look at how look at how quick this thing is. All right, and then of course we can crank up our engines a little bit. Let's uh, flick this on and go. Oh, it did the little jumpy thing. No, nope. oh, I hate this. I hate this stupid. There we go. Perfect. All right. Oh. I see. All right, here we go. Slowed it down just a little bit. Let's get going. Let's jump up this. Oh, I hate this so much. There we go. Perfect. Could have put stairs. Could have just put some simple stairs. So there we go. Now it's... Oh, I know what the issue is. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm so I'm so dumb. I'm actually the dumbest person in the world. It's uh, This is such a stupid mistake. The sensors are set to one range. They can't see the white. They're not even, they're not even recording. The, the, oh, I'm so dumb. That's such an easy fix. Yeah, the sensors need to have some range to them so they can actually see the stupid freaking bottom. There we go. They were at a range of one, and the thing was one block above it, so it would never see it. All right, here we go. Now it should just flip. There. Oh, look at that. Amazing. The robot works. Uh-oh, what's it gonna... Oh, no, it should be fine there. Made it through the first checkpoint. That sensor should see the white before the other one does. It'll rotate. Maybe. If both sensors see white, it'll just go in reverse, which is actually fine, to be honest. So it should make that. No issue. Perfect. Perfect. Keep going. 
No, no, you stupid, you suck. You suck. Okay. We need to move the sensors a little bit. So it'd be a lot easier if we had some controllers. We don't. Because if we had controllers and some extra bearings, we could angle the sensors outwards, which would just be a lot better. The issue there is that the sensor overshot the white and then it didn't see it anymore. We need like the sensor to have sort of like an array, a fan, not just one spot that it's looking at. But anyway, this should be fine. There we go. Let's try this again. Oh my goodness. I hate these so much. I, I really, I really do. Perfect. All right. No, what are... Did I set them wrong? Oh my god. Okay, well, you know, sometimes... Sometimes in real life this happens when you're working with robots. They just... You think they're gonna work, and then they don't. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, I had... Uh, the, the logic gates were already crosswired to the motors, and then the sensor was cross... Don't worry, it's all fine. It's all good. Everything should be perfect. I hate this so much. There's a bot factory pack too. I really hope in bot factory pack two there are no stupid jumpy platforms. All right, there we go. Let's just let's just do this now. Perfect. Perfect. You're you're amazing. It should be good now. The sensors are far enough away from the wheels. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Just ride the edge. Excellent. See that one? Yeah, wonderful. Excellent. Awesome. Sweet deal. Look at you go. You're a wonderful little robot, aren't you? You're gonna accomplish the mission. It only took us like 17 tries. Okay. Are you you gonna do it? Should be fine. It's nice when it hugs the outside edge like that because it means this outside sensor is going to pick up the white right away and just kind of run with the corner. That's perfect. Wonderful. Another checkpoint here. Excellent. One more checkpoint. You're going to you're going to do it. Should be no issue. All about that sensor position. Perfect. Excellent. One minute 30-ish? Done. Sweet deal. Next challenge. Hopefully less mistakes. Unfortunately, when you're looking at a challenge pack, you can't tell what um, what the challenge is. It doesn't tell you because of the, uh, you know, the, the titles are all in the main page, but not actually in the challenge. So this is challenge number eight. I don't know what it's called, though. Okay, it's just a really tall... It's, it's just got to go up the ramp. Is that it? Like, is there... I'm assuming there's just a finish at the top. They can't tell. And I can't go out either to investigate. Yeah, so it's just, it's just got to go up a really tall ramp. I mean, I don't... Do we need even sensors for that? One. We need thrusters. Couldn't I just put down thrusters, though, on a robot with electric engines? Like, how is this any more complicated than that? I don't, I don't think it is. All right, let's just slap something together real quick. All right, so my thought is if we do something like this, right? Well, you turn it on. It's got full down thrust on both thrusters and an electric engine going forward. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, okay, okay. I see how it is. I don't have any logic gates, do I? It's got so much thrust. The thrust is going to be so powerful that it's going to cause this to lift up because these back wheels are getting enough, you know, grip to push it up this ramp. You see that? Like, it was... Maybe if I actually... I could just slow this down a little bit, couldn't I? Maybe that'll stop that. If not, then we've got to just put the sensor to only trigger... Yeah, see, that's okay. We're good. Pretty sure this is just a go straight up, right? Of course, then there's the question, it might not have enough power. I don't... I feel like it will, though. I mean, it's just downforce, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's good. Uh-oh, will it clear it? Did I make it too long? It might not clear that. Oh no, it's good. It's good. Wait, what's it stuck on up there? What just happened? It was it was going fine and then it just now it's sideways. It's not going through the What happened? Did it it must have bottomed out. I can't tell. That's unfortunate. Okay, so let's just do this then. Let's just chop this. You know, and uh, make this just slightly, slightly shorter. 
I think it must have bottomed out. That's the only thing I could... It just randomly got to the top and turned left. Unless there's some weird secret hidden obstacle up there, but I really don't think there is, right? Oh, no. It's got the... Okay, okay. Let's just calm down. There we go. It's gonna be a slow crawl, but it'll do it. All right, perfect. Jump. No, jump. I hate this so much. There we go. Excellent. Okay, just go nice and chill this time. I feel like it must have bottomed out, and then it went, like, kind of squirrely and sideways. Unless there's some weird, like, turn at the top there, but I don't see anything. And they only gave you one sensor, so I feel like it's not... It's not anything critical. Make it over the top, bud. You can do it. I believe. Okay, it definitely doesn't bottom out there. Yeah, it must have bottomed out. It looks like it's going straight now. I think. Are you gonna make it? You're gonna make- Ah, I made it! Perfect! Perfect! Excellent! What a champ! Next level. What is this level? There's three balls. Okay, or three ball collectors. Is what there is. Okay, interesting. Three ball collectors. And I'm assuming there's three balls that spawn there? Is that- Is this one of those, like, where we have to go pick up three balls each time? See, I'm gonna do this smarter this time. If we have to pick up three balls. Uh-oh. Hold on. Come on. There we go. There's one ball there. Okay. So I have a feeling what we have to do is go pick up the ball, bring it back, and then a new ball is going to spawn, and then we bring it back. And so basically we have to have it set so that if it doesn't have a ball, it goes forward, and if it has a ball, it goes in reverse, and just keep repeating that process. And then it uses the white lines as a guideline. But I'm going to do this smarter. Last time I did this really stupid... We're not going to do it stupid this time. We're going to do it smart. We're going to use a sensor to check if you have a ball. And if you have a ball, just go in the ops direction. So let's start by making a really basic tank robot. So now all we got to do is make a uh, sensor thingy. We need spots for the sensors to detect the ball itself. So, well, hold on. We have five sensors here. So we can do two to detect the ball in the front. And if either of these sees something, then we know there's a ball here, is basically what this is at. We'll set these to a range of two. Uh, no, a range of one, right? We should be able to go... Actually, let's spread these out, too, just to, just to be safe, to make sure it actually works. So let's put one here and one here. And if either of these sees something in a range of two, that means you've, you've got the ball, and then you can pull the ball in. So this is going to be a not gate. And basically, as long as you don't see anything in your range there, you keep the sensor beam things open. Um, or the, the piston ball grabber majumners open. And then we can go forward as long as this is active, and then we have to go in reverse, but we still have to steer is the other issue, and we need color sensors to do the steering. So let's make some little color sensor attachment points. I don't know, something like that. Perfect. Make them just a little bit wider than that. We can put this... Actually, we could do it like that. There we go. Excellent. Uh, no, hold on. We don't want to... We're gonna... We're gonna hit the edge of the starting gate. I always forget that you have a starting gate. We'll make these 10. White, doesn't matter. There we go. 10. Perfect. Alright, so now what we gotta do is wire this thing up. So if we're going with this... If this knot gate is on, that means we go forward. If the knot gate is off, it means we go in reverse. Um, so first thing we'll do is we'll just wire these all up to some AND gates. Because we're gonna need some conditions for this whole system. So forward, back, forward, back on the left and right. So if this knock gate's on, we can go forward on both. If that knock gate is off, we go reverse on both. So I think the easier way to do this is to have a second set of sensors at the back rather than at the front, especially because when we're going in reverse, if we have the white sensors sensing the sides here, it's gonna, these wheels are gonna go off before those sensors sense that they're going off. So we need a second set of sensors at the back, which is probably why they gave you five. So we can do something like this, and do something like that, and then reduce this down to only one sensor in the middle instead of two. Um, this is the ball sensing sensor again, range of two, whatever, doesn't matter. So that can sense the ball, not a big deal. And then at the back, we have two more color sensors. This will make this a little bit easier, actually. So, you know, 10, whatever, color mode, perfect. And if we're going forward, so if this is active, then we use these two. 
And if this one is active, this OR gate, then we use the front... No, the front two on the NOR gate, the back two on the OR gate. So, if the front one is... At, oh my god, we're gonna need so many gates for this. Do we have... Oh, we have tons of gates. Okay, so... I need these to be OR gates instead. And let's just, let's just reduce... Let's just... Yeah, let's just move all that. So, people are probably gonna tell me in the comments I'm overcomplicating this. This gate is inactive. And this gate is active. So we are not seeing anything on the left. Then that means we can go forward on the right. If the opposite of this is true, oh, I see this is okay. Hold on, we need some we need some logic gates on these. Here we go. Or gates on these for sure. If this is active, this sensor is active, and this is active, then we can go forward on the right. If this sensor is active, and this is active, then we can go reverse on the right. Perfect. And then we do the opposite for the left. So, if this is active, and this is active, we can go forward on the left. If this is active, and this is active, we go reverse on the left. So basically what this is saying is, as long as this sensor doesn't see anything, you're allowed to go forward on the right. If this sensor sees something while you're going in the forward mode, then you gotta go reverse. And opposite is true. So now, in the opposite direction, same thing, we got two more AND gates. So, if reverse, we can just connect this up to all four, honestly, which means we're in reverse mode. And now we're going that way. So, if this is active, if the left one is active, uh, yeah, we'll put it up here, and the right one is active. So if the left one's active and we're in reverse mode, then we're allowed to go forward on the right, which is actually the left now. And if this is, don't worry, this is all going to make sense and maybe work, I hope. So probably this will probably work, right? So basically what we're doing is when the robot's going, when it sees the ball, then this becomes forward. And when it doesn't see the ball, this is forward. And it's the same circuit just flipped. So yeah, it, it's, this should this should work. All right, perfect. Here we go. Let's try this out. It's either going to work gloriously on the first try or not at all. Oh my God, I hate these things. I still hate these things. There we go. Perfect. What are you doing? Oh, did I make the sensors too wide? Oh, I made the sensors too wide. Alright, I've moved the sensors in by one block. I'm gonna slow these down just a little bit again. I think we're good. Now the sensors are gonna be the exact range that we need, so it might have to take a little bit to perfectly navigate through if I can get up here, but that's okay. It does it. There you go. Perfect. No problem. So you can see, it's literally the exact width. Like, it's it's just enough. But I want the sensors as wide as possible because this corner isn't very narrow. Like, we got to make sure that it can make it. There we go. Perfect. Keep going. Keep going. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Uh, I really hope it grabs that ball. I might have to put some, like, wedge pieces. Do we even have wedge? We do. I might have to put some on the front. Oh, no. It'll grab it. It'll grab it. Grab, grab, grab it, grab it. What are you doing? Don't play with it. Why are the pistons not closing? Ah, these puzzles are definitely more complicated than they started at, which is great. I like it. I like that there's a challenge. But uh, yeah, scrap mechanic robots are uh, are definitely the peak of robotic development. No question. In my mind, this is going to definitely go off the cliff. Because it's going to just clip. Oh, maybe not. Maybe going to... Yeah, definitely going to go off the cliff. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Can't believe you didn't go off the cliff there. Alright, so you got to grab the ball. You got to do this three times, bro. Three times. So you got to at least do it once correctly. Just get in there. Grab, grab the... Uh, grab... Don't push the... God dang it. You stupid robot. It's too narrow. Hold on a minute. I feel like the end is too narrow. That's the issue. The stupid. I need to make the ball like retriever further out. That's the only issue I think. If I can get up there and check, that would be fantastic. I swear to God, I'm. Oh my God. I I'm I I. No matter how many times I practice this, I'm not getting better. Ugh. Wait. I have a lift. 
hate those jump pads. They're the worst. Okay, how narrow is that end? It is narrower. The white at the end gets narrower than it is up here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's eight blocks wide. That's the issue. I can't... The stupid sensors are ten blocks wide because it's ten here, but it's eight at the end. So we just need to make the ball retriever further out. Okay. This is actually a simple solution then. So we just got to take this whole mechanism, um, which is, of course, those are in the front. Okay, so we'll just take this and just extend this way out further. Like, something like that. Who cares? Right? Problem solved. And then just reconnect everything up. Now, of course, the problem is going to be the stupid thing isn't going to fit in the door, is it? Oh, it barely fits in the door. Okay! We're at max, like, max dimensions for this robot completely. Perfect. There we go. Alright, let's go. Snake through there. Excellent. The ball retriever's way out front. Which the only issue that's going to be is if the ball retriever overhangs the edge and the ball just drops off when we try to make this corner on the way back. But I don't think that'll happen. See like right there how it was overhanging the edge? It could potentially drop the ball out. I don't think that'll happen. Could have just painted that to be 10 wide. It would have been great. But instead it's a little narrower. Alright, get the ball. Get Get the ball. You stupid thing. See, it pushes the ball too far away. Oh my god. It dro Wait a minute, it dropped the ball off. That means the ball's gonna respawn, right? Oh my god, and dropped it again. Okay, okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. This thing is so bad! Oh no! Oh no, you're so dumb! You're so dumb! Just, there's the- no! Oh, oh! You had it for a sec- Oh! 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 Why are you- What are you doing? Maybe that sensor does need to be a little bit longer. It's gotta do this three times, too. That's a thing. So if it's barely getting it the first time, it's gonna have problems doing it the next couple times. I was hoping to do, like, six levels today. I feel like this is gonna be the last one based on how long this is taking. It's been- it's been good, though. It's been good. I've been learning a lot. Oh god. Oh uh, yeah. Oh no, okay, we're good. We're good. It turns great. This robot runs really well. Hopefully it does the same in reverse. It's got a sensor range of two now. The ball retriever's way out front. It's gonna turn into that. There we go. Grabbed it. Oh, perfect. Perfect. And now it should be using just the back sensors and ignoring the front ones completely. So it shouldn't care what happens to those other sensors. Yeah, it looks like it's doing well. Perfect. And then as soon as it drops off the ball... Nice, that sensor still got the ball. Excellent. As soon as it drops off the ball, it should flip back into forward mode. It just It's just doing some stick handling. Just navigating the ball back. Oh my god, this is amazing. Nice, nice. Stick handling mode. Perfect. And now see it goes forward again. And opens right back up. Excellent. Get the second ball. What? Okay. I thought I heard something weird going on there. Oh, go in reverse. Get out of there. Perfect. Nice. Nice. This thing is sick. First try. No issues whatsoever in building this. Oh, what a- what- it clamped that with authority. It knew. Knew it was gonna get it. Alright, full reverse. Full reverse. Turn. Nice. This is sick. This is so good. So good. Much less complicated than the solution I did in the last video. That's for sure. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I maybe should have put the sensors 8 wide instead of 10. That would have- that would have helped a lot. You want them as wide as possible- well, actually, you want them as wide as your wheels at the minimum. Or else, you know, you're gonna have the issue where your wheel could go off and the sensor doesn't see it. But, you know, the wider they are, then the less likely you are to go off the edge. But of course, it, uh, yeah, it, uh, it causes some issues here. Go in reverse. Look at that. So good. Alright, get this final ball. You can do it, robot. I believe in you. 
Come on. Just turn. Yep. Nope. Yeah. Oh my god, amazing. Alright, perfect. 100%. Let's go. Turn. Turn. Nice. Just stick handle, stick handle. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Just work your way back. You'll get it. You'll get it. You can do it. Eventually. There you go. Perfect. Let's go. Perfect robot. Well, I think that's going to be it for now. Uh, I was hoping to do more levels, but honestly, these levels are getting more and more complicated. And, uh, you know, we'll see how far we can get in the next video. But I really like this Bot Factory series. It's super cool. And the robots are getting slightly more complicated each time. But, uh, of course, they actually, they all still work on the same basic principles. For example, this sensor thing... Rather than doing the whole reading with memory bits, yeah, I, I overcomplicated it last time. But I think this is actually a relatively simple solution. I don't really know if there's a simpler way to do it. Maybe with a few less gates here. I'm not sure. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, let me know what you think of this Bot Factory series. Like I said, there is a Bot Factory 2 as well. And uh, as long as they got rid of these stupid bouncy lifts, I think I will probably play through it at the same point. But uh, this is a really, really cool challenge pack. And I really enjoy trying to make these autonomous robots that have to solve various tasks. So let me know what you guys think. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.